Do you have a dog that's so excited that it just keeps jumping and jumping and jumping? You've tried everything. Maybe you've even followed our videos. Your technique is perfect, but it's not working. Well, today we're gonna try a different approach. I'm instructor Carol, and this is Cole. Welcome back to McCann Dogs. I'm working with Cole today, and Cole is a jumper. And you know what? I'm even, not doing a very good job of it, uh, working on jumping as I stand here and talk to you. Come here, buddy, we're gonna talk about jumping. So um, I'm working on it because I'm gonna try to prevent it while I'm not ready to deal with it. So I don't want him rewarded for jumping up on me because I'm not prepared to deal with it. So I've just got my foot on my leash. I'm not holding him down. He could even do a little jump on me if he got excited but it's just not gonna be successful. When he goes to jump, he gets immediate feedback not to jump, right buddy? So um, I'm managing the behavior. Now, Cole's one of those jumpers. I, you know, maybe you've tried everything. You may have great timing, you're telling them off, you're adding the little pulses, you're doing everything you see on those videos, it's not working. So some dogs, that's maybe gonna take a long, long time, probably will work. It's gonna take so long to change the behavior. So I wanna give you a couple of other ways. Number one is don't let them rehearse jumping and get rewarded because the minute he jumps up on me, even if I'm adding some pulses, I mean, and I'm not gonna be rough with him, but even if I was, he's still getting attention. Negative attention is still attention. Before I give you the secret formula, what I wanna do is talk about those fixes. I absolutely, so I don't let him rehearse it, but I also need to let him know jumping's wrong. So if he's jumping on me, you are gonna see me add that off and little pulses at a 45. I'm not being harsh. I'm also not pushing him over. I'm very calm, because he's already got tons of excitement and energy. I don't need to add to that. So off, I'm gonna let him know jumping is wrong. I need to do that. Not letting him get rewarded by it, let him know it's wrong, but, what I'm gonna to do to change the behavior is actually set him up to make some choices and I'm gonna control the situation. So now jumping's not rewarding, but not jumping is the way he gets the reward. So I'm gonna get some food, Cole, and I'm gonna, oh, look what I got, look what I got. Can you turn around this way so we can see you? Yes, oh, do you want this? Oh, you want that? He says, oh, no, I don't. Are you ready? Do you want this? Oh, look at what I got, look at what I got, do you want that? Yes, what a good boy. Good, so even him just not being able to jump up on me has calmed him quite a bit. Are you ready? Are you ready? Do you want this? Oh, and see how he got that immediate little push and he says, so now he says the right behavior, so I'm not yelling at him, I'm not getting mad, I'm just not letting him win when he jumps, but when he doesn't jump, oh yes, good boy. And you can see how fast he is changing his behavior. Now, does that mean 10 minutes later, two minutes later, it's not going to happen. No, but he's learning emotional control and he's rehearsing. I don't want to jump even when there's food there. Good boy. So if I don't let him rehearse it when I'm not ready and I have him practice this over and over again, I don't want to jump. Yes. Good boy. And notice I'm rewarding as soon as he makes the right choice. What if I got a toy? Not my microphone. What if I got a toy? Oh, yeah, get that thing. Oh, good boy. Out. Yes, good boy. Good work. Do you want that? Oh, yes, get that. So I'm not waiting too long with my young dog. I'm going to give them easy wins. He doesn't jump for a second. Out. Yes, good. Out, good boy. Good work. Then I'm going to just present it again. And that's what I don't want to happen, that I have to move that toy around. I didn't do a very good job, Cole. You did a much better job. Because when I have to move that toy out of his way, it actually makes it more exciting. So if I can manage to keep that foot on there and not have it slip, now he gets immediate feedback that that toy is not available when he's jumping and I don't have to be flailing it around. Get it, what a good boy. Oh, you're brilliant, you're brilliant. Am I gonna get some food out to work that out so that he can do that perfectly? Yes. So I'm gonna tell him off, let him know that was wrong. Get my foot back on that leash. 
Good boy. Yes. Good boy. Oh, you're brilliant. You're brilliant. I'm going to do a better job of managing that off because he loves the toy so much and I got boring kibble. So I could have better treats or I'm going to have a handful of treats. So rather than he grabs that food, goes back, now I can keep him busy so that I can get my foot back on the leash and I can not have him running after that toy. So I'm back in control. Present the toy. Yes, get it. Good choice. What a good man. You are brilliant. You are so smart. You are so smart. Good boy. Out. Multiple treats in my hand. I can get my foot back on that leash. Not enough so he can jump up and go flying back to the floor. Just enough so he gets immediate feedback. If he go, yes, he didn't even hit that leash that time. What a good boy. So you can see now, instead of me fighting, now Cole's working to win and winning means not jumping, which means he's rehearsing. I don't want to jump. So I've talked about the strategy of just not letting Cole rehearse jumping um, so that he's not jumping now, but now he's barking. He's trying something different. So I'm going to give you a third way to work and that will also deal with the barking. Dogs jump usually because they want to see us. They're friendly. You sit, buddy. Um, but I can also, so they're excited. They're stimulated. That's not bad. Cole's a great dog. He's just got tons of energy. So I can prevent him barking. Then the energy came out a different way. Giving that choice is so powerful, but I can also give him a new job to do something that's incompatible with jumping up. So I might lure him into a sit here. Cole knows how, but if you have a dog that doesn't, I can just help them in there. What a good boy. Now I've got my leash gathered up so I can prevent the jumping or deal with it if it happens. And I can, yeah, so I'm going to put lots of value to sitting at my side. What a good man. Good work. So in this case, unlike my ch chance before, he may make a mistake and I'm going to just let him know, uh, tell him off and I'm going to use that leash to direct him off me. And you see by giving him another job to do, I'm giving him an outlet for that energy. He's now focusing on his job and Cole knows the sit. So I'm putting value to that. So instead of barking, instead of jumping off, sit, and I'm just going to place him back. So your job is to sit. Good boy. Very nice. Oh my goodness. Good work. Yes. And then when he's, yes, when he settled, I can yes and reward him again. What a good pup. Excellent. So I'm telling him instead of jumping, this is what I want you to do. When dogs are working and getting rewarded for that behavior, good boy, then they're not able to jump because that's incompatible. Did you catch when Cole stopped jumping and started barking at me? That's a demand bark. If you're struggling with barking, you might want to check out, thank you Cole, this video. On that note, I'm Carol. This is Cole. Happy training.